Well, welcome everybody to this class of Qigong and aging. Um, I'm Debbie, I'm the owner of Feel Good Qigong, and I wanna thank you for participating today. It's, um, Qigong is one of my uh, loves and passions. I love to practice Qigong, study, and also teach it. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to share the information. Um, Qigong is a big subject. Uh, I won't be able to get to all of it today. That's why I'm doing uh, four different uh, little mini workshops for the month of June, just to kind of build on each um, presentation to so you get a little bit of a broader scope of what Qigong is all about. Um, so it, this is not just only about a class on aging, but also self-care and just to kind of give you an example of what I mean by self-care, you know, we need, really need self-care right now because we are really going through a lot. I yesterday had one of those moments of high anxiety at around 11 o'clock. I mean, we have this pandemic that we're dealing with and of course everything else with the protesting and just this vision of, of what had happened. It was just very upsetting and for me, and I'm sure, and collectively I know it is for everybody. And at 11 o'clock yesterday morning, I ha was having this anxiety attack. I couldn't breathe, my body hurt, I just couldn't see. So thankfully I had my day cleared because I was working on my presentation. So what I did is I went to my sacred space, I closed my door, I shut, shut off all my social media, all of my computers, my phone, and I did my practice. I didn't set a time limit for it, but I knew what to do. I, you know, I practiced yoga, I did Qigong, I did my meditation, my breathing, and it, it took me about two hours. And after the two hours, I wasn't feeling anxiety, I wasn't feeling hate, I wasn't feeling love, I was feeling compassion. And that's where it brought me to, that's where I know I needed to go yesterday was in a compassionate uh, state of mind. And I was able to, you know, to work through the day. And of course I woke up again this morning feeling a lot of anxiety again, but I, I did a little practice. So self-care, stress is a huge um, indicator that something is off. And also that's heavy stress, if we stay in stress too long, it makes us ill. And especially we have to be careful as we, as we are aging, um, because the, bro the body just can't handle as much as it could when we were younger. Um, and so it's understanding that about ourselves and understanding what can we do when we're in, in high stress, first under noticing when we're in high stress, and then doing self-care practices to get out of it and to get into maybe a better place. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I could tell you, the more you start to cultivate self-care, self the easier it becomes and you could quickly get to that space again. Um, so some of this class today, you know, and Qigong is about uh, self-care. So to explain Qigong, um, we need to look at Eastern medicine and Western medicine. Um, Eastern medicine is two to 5,000 years old. Western medicine is 250 years old. So there's a big difference in um, tradition, not traditions, but in longevity of a particular practice. Um, Eastern uh, medicine is called vitalism. And what vitalism practice is, is of the body, the mind, and the spirit. It's the body and also the mind, and they also take and consider it the spirit, which is something that we don't tangibly cannot see, but is important to our health. Western medicine is about the body and pharmaceuticals. Um, they don't necessarily get into uh, the mind piece of it or the spirituality piece of it, although that is changing. And I'll explain why that's changing. Um, so I look at the Eastern vital, tat, vitalism approach to be more about self-care, and I look at Western medicine, which is actually called allopathy medicine, is more of a sick care and there's this it's important to bridge both of these because we need both i if i'm in a car accident and my leg just blew off i don't need vitalism at that time i don't need the body mind and, and spirit it's brand new to you because some of you on this um, call have done have been practicing the qigong with me or someone else if you've never done it before just experience it and i'm going to give you some time we're going to um journal a little bit about our experience so you can kind of reflect on um, what just happened. 
So I thought we would start with a centering. So a centering is just a way to check in with ourselves. Um, it's something you can do all day long. It's a great way to bring you into the present moment before we actually go into to movement. So just come into a comfortable seated posture. I ask, you know, the best thing is to not slouch because that brings you too, too compressed and, and the centering is about expansion and expansing, expanding you know, what's going on. So this will take just maybe five minutes. So get into a comfortable position. Ideally, if you're on a chair, you want your feet flat on the floor. Your hands could be either face down, the palms could be face down, that's more of an inward pose. When your palms are faced up, that's a little bit more of a external pose. It doesn't matter, you know, but just, just notice that when you have your hands down, how that feels, when you have your palms up, how that feels. And then come into a comfortable position. It's best to do this with your eyes closed, but if you tend to close your eyes and feel like you're gonna to go to sleep, that could be a trigger for people, then keep the eyes soft, because we don't wanna go into sleep mode. We wanna go into uh, more of a relaxation mode than sleep. So as you close your eyes or keep the eyes soft, <clears throat> just take a few moments. I'm gonna give you a few moments to Listen to the sounds that are inside your room, wherever you are, listening to those sounds that are inside the room. And then listen to the sounds outside your room. What do you hear? And then notice the temperature of the room, the temperature of your own body. And then as you take an inhalation, can you feel the breath touching your nose as you inhale and exhale? And just notice how you're breathing. You know, do you feel you're clenching in your breath? Do you feel tight in the chest? Maybe your breath is, maybe you've done a lot of breath work and you understand how to deepen the breath. You know, is your breath deep? Do you feel the breath in your belly, your chest, your belly, your ribs, and your chest? Or did you feel the breath only in the upper chest? So, your breath, just notice your breath. And this is non-judgmental. We're not judging yourself. It's just where, where you're at right now. This is a checking. How are you breathing? And then ask yourself this question. How does my physically body feel right now? and see what comes up for you. When I did this, my hip was hurting today. I felt my, I was feeling aching my hands. Some days are better than others. If you don't feel anything, just say, I don't feel, you know, say to yourself, I don't feel anything. So physically, how do you feel right now? And then ask yourself, how are you emotionally feeling? As I had mentioned yesterday, I had so much anxiety. Today, not so much. So emotionally, right now, how do you feel? And then on your next inhalation, we're gonna inhale through the nose. And when you exhale, exhale softly out through the mouth. Inhaling through the nose when you're ready. And as you exhale, exhale out through your mouth. Let the exhalation, try to make your exhalation a little bit longer than your inhalation because the release comes with the exhalation. 
So you inhale through the nose, pucker the lips, and exhale all the air out through your puckered lips. And then just come back to your normal breath. And now we're just gonna use a count. We're just gonna count as you inhale one, you exhale one. And you're gonna say this to yourself, I inhale one, I exhale one. <clears throat> I exhale two, I exhale two. And if your mind starts to wander off, oh, I have to go shopping today, bring it back to your count. Just take the mind and control it back to your count. We're just gonna stay here for a count of 10. So begin. And then whatever count you're at, just do one more count, and then stop, and just observe, again, how you're feeling in general. And give that feeling a word. And when you're ready, just slowly transition out of the centering as you slowly open your eyes. And then I want you to just write your experience of how you felt for the centering, who came up for you. Just journal a little bit about the centering experience before we move into our practice. And then we're going to start our physical practice by standing up. And we're going to start the next, the this next little segment that I'm going to do, the breath, and I'm going to keep reminding you about the breath. The breath is going to be in through the nose, and we're going to exhale out through the mouth. Um, I had mentioned before that when we let the exhalation be a little bit longer, um, we tend to breathe too much air in, and we don't let enough air out. So this is a, a little wake-up uh, segment, so the breath's going to be a little bit fuller, so that's why I'm going to keep reminding you to inhale through the nose and blow it out through the mouth. So we're gonna start with, it's called shaking. And we simply start to shake our hands. Shaking is a big, um, you'll see this a lot in a Qigong practice. So after you shake your hands, then you start to shake the legs along with it. Eventually, the more you get comfortable with shaking, you'll start to feel, and I'll come to the side so you can see, you know, it's, it's gonna, you're shaking your head and your neck as well. So the upper body's loosening up. This takes a little bit of time to get used to shaking. Like, when do we ever do this, right? We did when we were a kid, right? That childlike feeling. 
But shaking helps to loosen up the body. It's all about when we age, uh, we get dried out because we are not circulating like we used to when we were, um, you know, a child. We were born, a newborn is born with, so you can keep shaking and inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. When we're born, we are 90% water. As we start to get older, it cuts down to about 65% water. And then as we get much older, it's 55% water. So we start to actually dry out because we're not circulating. But this circulates the body. It's the quickest way to circulate the body. And it's also a pumping action. We're pumping the lymphatics up, lymphatics um, need pumping they have to go up and they need to be manipulated to go up so inhale through the nose exhale out through the mouth keep shaking inhale through the nose exhale out through the mouth one more time inhale through the nose exhale out through the mouth and then stop and then feel tingling bring the palms of your hands together and notice if you can feel some tingling between the palms of the hands. This is energy circulating between the palms. You can't see it, but you can certainly feel it. Then as you inhale, I want you to expand this energy between the hands, and as you exhale, compress the hands, compress that energy. And then as you inhale, you're expanding the energy, and then as you exhale, you compress. If you can't feel anything, that's okay. This takes some time to understand and to cultivate energy cultivation. Now we're going to start to tap. I want you to feel your clavicle bones. The tip of the clavicle bones, you're going to come down two inches and you make little beat, bird beaks with your fingers and we tap here. These are some of the meridians of the body. I talked about those highways of the body. This is a highway to the body of the, for the lungs and the kidneys. We're going to inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth, inhale through the nose, keep tapping, exhale out through the mouth. One more time, inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Now tap the center of your chest. This is the thymus gland. Inhale through the nose, Exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And now we're going to tap with our fingertips right along this ridge. This is our liver and our spleen, gallbladder. We're going to inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And now we're going to tap right under the orbit of the eye. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. This is our stomach meridian. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Now you're going to slap the finger, shake it out. And now we're going to walk. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth, and now we're going to cross the hands over and hit the opposite knee. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Slap it off again, shake it out. Take one side of your hand on the opposite shoulder and cross it over. Other side, cross it over and continue. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through your mouth as you continue to cross over. In through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Shake it out. Hands right by the pubic bone. We inhale, we're gonna zip this energy up. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. And again, inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Bring one finger to your belly button, one finger to your third eye. Press in and up. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And release the arms to your side. And notice, experience, 
your body. How do you feel right now? Remember, no right or wrong answer. You might not feel anything, but take note. What do you feel? So that was moving our energy around. Um, we, this was a crossover. We tend to be very linear. We have right side of the brain works the left side of the body. Left side of the body works the right side of the body. If we're linear, we never move any other way. We get jammed up. Crossing over opens up the head, the brain. It gets some movement going, energy movement going, that energy that you can't see. It's moving that energy. Now we're going to start moving the body. We're going to start with the rotation. Start with one of your feet. Just rotating the ankle. So these are, again, we're like, think of yourself as a garden hose. If you have a knot in a garden hose, there's no water coming out of that thing. Same thing with us, other foot. If you are knotted up because of stress or from bad posture or from not moving, you are going to get knotted up and your fluids will not work and you will dry out. We, the whole game here is to keep fluid moving and to bring nutrients to our organs. We're not going to die of a broken bone, but we will die of an organ failure. We might die from the broken bone because we have to go to the hospital and then something else happens, but you will die, you know, we die from or an organ failure. So we got to keep those organs really um, healthy. And movement is one way, but again, it's what kind of movement are you going to do to keep circulating? And that doesn't over inflame the body. You don't want to bring inflammation in any sort of way. And that's also with thoughts. Thoughts also create inflammation. So we're, we're just rotating the body. Ro rotating body just feels good on the joints. And maybe rotate your shoulders. Just get some movement here, rotating movement. We want to move the body in every way. When you're ch a child, we were moving every way. We were doing tumble songs. We were doing cartwheels. We were swinging from trees. And then we get older and we stop all stuff and we need to keep movement a variety of movements in our body and now we're going to start with a forward bend and a back bend so we simply just arch the back soften those knees when you're doing this come on the four mounts of the toes the front of the foot and then as you exhale you're going to round the spine bringing the chin to the chest tuck in the tailbone squeeze the glutes opening up the back of the shoulder blades and then inhale we're opening up into a back bend so here's the back bend Exhale, you're going to round. So this is a cat dog. So if you know yoga, you know cat dog, and that's what this is. We're moving the body in a back flexion and in a forward flexion. It's a wonderful movement for the spinal cord. Gets fluids moving in the spinal cord, which helps with the cerebral brain, getting some fluid also in the brain. Did you know 80% of our brain is water? 80%. You got to get water in there. You got to get these moving, the lymphatics moving to get that water up into the upper body. So this is a forward flexion and a back flexion. Now we're going to do a twisting flexion. And this, there's lots of ways of doing twists, but I love this. This is called knocking on the door of life because we're knocking on some key points here of the body. We're knocking on the kidneys. We're knocking on our liver. Um, and you were twisting the spine. It's a multi, uh, Facet movement. It's doing lots of things here. We're not only twisting the spine, but we're also activating some uh, major organs here. So you're just, the arms are like coat sleeves of a heavy coat sleeves, and you're just bringing them from side to side. If you get dizzy doing this, keep your head straight. Sometimes I get nauseous from going side to side, so I might keep my head center, but the rest of my spine is twisting. Now we're gonna do a little tap, a little tap right by the chest. Now we're activating our lung meridian. Real important to keep the lungs clear, especially with this pandemic, with this virus that attacks the respiratory uh, system, but it, it, it attacks the lungs. 70% of our waste or out through the exhalation of our lungs. Very important to exhale. That's why it's important to really notice your breath because you release toxins out of the lungs. And now you can, if you want, you can slap the back of your shoulder. This is great for the, feels good on the shoulder, also feels good on the neck. And then there's lots of meridians back here as well. And then we'll bring it down back to the chest and then back to our low back. Knocking on the door of life, another popular Qigong that, movement that you will see and do often in a routine. And then slow it down, slow it down. And again, take note, you know, how do you feel? Maybe you feel a little bit more energized. 
Now we're going to take it to a side bend. We're just going to lean over to your left side as you slide your left arm down your left leg, opening up that right side of your body. And then you'll come back to center and you're going to go over to the other side. So here's a side flexion. Just go at your own pace, going from side to side, feeling that side of your body opening. If you want to upgrade the stretch a little bit more, your shoulder feels okay, you can take that opposite arm, really stretch out that side of your body. They say, it's a big thing in yoga, they say you're as young as the flexibility of your spine and we need to move in many flexions. So this is our side flexion. So many ways of doing side flexion. This is one way, and there's so many other ways, but you wanna get the spine moving in these different flexions of the body, of the spine. And then we'll come back to center. We're gonna do a little stretching here. Um, let's come up onto our toes, arms are up overhead, stretch out through the, your pinky fingers and your pinky toes, you stretch all the fascia, the connective tissue and then release. And we'll do this again, stretch all the way, it's like a big yawn, a big yawn in the body, and then release. And now let's come into a wide angle forward fold, but take your time with this, we're gonna start halfway. If you have any problems in your, if your low back hurts, if you notice your low back is hurting, you wanna do forward bends always with bent knees. And then you, when you're ready and you feel comfortable, come all the way down into your forward fold. Drop the head and the neck, you can shake out here, and get a forward fold here. You can move your hands forward if you want as you push back with your tailbone and get a really great stretch in the backs of the legs, in the hips and the thighs. If you want to bend one knee at a time, bending one knee at a time, opening up the inner thighs a little bit deeper. And remember you're breathing, you're inhaling and exhaling. Don't hold your breath. Catch yourself holding your breath and then breathe through it. Now we're slowly going to come up one vertebrae at a time. Keep the tailbone tucked in as you come up. The head is the last thing that will come up as you come back up to standing. And again, notice how you feel. Bring your legs back together. We're going to do some crossover. This is one of my favorites called Swimming Dragon. Palms of the hands together. You're going to bring your palms over and your arms over to your left as you look over to your right. You feel a nice twisting movement here. Come back to center. You're going to come to the right as you look to your left. Notice the stretch there where that's working. And then back to center and back to the other side. And you're just going to move from side to side. This is called swimming dragon. It's also considered a crossover movement. What I had talked about before, crossing over from one side to the other is really beneficial for lots of things, for thinking and coordinating, and then back to center. We're gonna open this a little bit. So you're gonna start, let's do this with, with, uh, wide, with wide legs. And you start to go from side to side. But you're letting this movement come more from the, the hips and then the torso comes along for the ride. And then the arms are coming up and they're going down. Swimming dragon is really great for the spine. You go from one side to the other and feel this movement spiraling up. You're breathing in and out. Moving that spine. You can start to bring the head and the neck with it. If you want to go down lower, you can go down lower. If you want to come up, you start to come up. So play around with it. Take your, let your body go where it wants to go and really enjoy this. It's a wonderful, flowy movement. It's a nice movement to do this time of year. It's very flowy and watery-like. And then we'll come back to center and release. Bring the legs back together. We're gonna inhale, we're gonna draw up what's called earth energy. We're drawing up this earth energy, bringing the arms above your head, and then exhale, we release down. We let go of what we wanna let go of. Let go of what doesn't serve you right now. Inhale, draw up. You're gonna gather energy from above you, and then exhale, you take these two energies and we release down. Letting go, letting go back into the earth. And then again, draw in from the earth, gather energy from above you, and then take these two energies, the yin and the yang energies, and slowly 
Sweep them down your body, letting go of whatever you need to let go. We're going to do one more, and then when you bring the hands down, just tap your head. Bring the hands to your head, and we're going to tap. We're doing some tapping. Tapping is another great way to get circulation to the body. Um, it's a big, it's kind of like acupuncture, where you are giving yourself some acupuncture here, getting some circulation to the brain. And then start to bring it over to the jaw and the face, move the, the, the mouth around, hold lots of stuff in the mouth. And then a little bit on the neck, and then start to tap. And this time we're gonna do the Tarzan tap. So we tap like Tarzan, and we're also gonna use sound here. We're gonna use the heart sound, which is H-A, ah. Inhaling, exhale, ah. Feeling that vibration in the heart. Come over to the side a little bit for the lungs. And then we're going to tap right uh, down the left inside edge of the arm, all the way down to the palms of the hands. And then out on the outside edge of the arm, all the way over to the back of the shoulder. And then you're going to go around under the armpit, which is your heart meridian. And then we go in a circle around the breast, which are lots of lymphatics here. So we're circulating. Tapping is about circulating. It's also great for bone density. And then we come over to the middle, tapping the middle, and then down our right arm, down the inside edge of the right arm, to the palm, to the outside edge of the arm, right under the armpit, and then around the breast, getting those lymphatics going. And then we come down, let's do another heart tap, and then we're going to bring it down to the belly. And we're going to do big circles, let's start from up above right by the diaphragm, you're gonna go from right to left in a big circle, right to left. So we're getting in here the liver, the gallbladder, the spleen, the large intestine, small intestines. We're waking that area up. Now bring it to the outside edge of the hips and tap the hips, tap the femur bone. Again, this is great for bone density, also circulation. Tap now the back, the low back. This is your kidney area, your adrenals tap, 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 getting the kidneys. Um, lubricated, and then we tap down the backs of the glutes, down the backs of the legs, backs of the knees, backs of the calves, backs of your ankles, around the foot, to the inside edge of the leg. Remember, these are these are all, this will all get into about the meridians in another class, and then we're going to go to the outside edge of the leg. And then we come up the front of the leg, and stay here for a little bit on your knees, the knees again really bend up a lot so we get some circulation to the knees and then come up the front of the leg. And you're just going to tap right here in the groin area. Again, lymphatics. Lymph nodes. You've got to get them circulated. Very, very important. And then hold and notice how you feel. Do you feel a little bit more vi a little bit more vitality, a little bit more energized? Notice how you feel. Maybe you don't feel anything. They say, like, if you don't move, you don't feel. If you don't feel, you don't move. So sometimes it takes some time to understand, okay, how do I feel? How am I moving and how am I feeling? Oh, my shoulder hurts. Oh, I feel that. So the more you do this kind of work, you'll get more familiar with how something feels. Now we're gonna do a little pumping action for the legs. We're gonna inhale and exhale. You bend the knees, you bring the arms back. We inhale up, exhale out. Inhale up, exhale out, inhale up. Exhale out, inhale up. Exhale out, inhale up. Exhale out, inhale up. Exhale in, exhale out. Inhale through the nose, blow it out. So we're working, we're pumping the thigh muscles, a very large muscle of the body. This gives us a little um, more dynamic movement for this time of year. It's warm out, we can do more dynamic movement. And then just a couple more and then stop. Bring one hand onto the belly, one hand onto your chest, and maybe you'll feel your heart rate up a little bit, which is good. And take a deep breath into the belly, into the ribs and into the chest. You're gonna hold that breath. And then as you exhale, exhale out through the mouth, through the chest, through the ribs, through the belly. Inhaling into the belly, the ribs, and the chest. Exhale from the chest, the ribs, and the belly. And continue, inhale into the belly, the ribs, and the chest. Exhale out. 
from the chest, ribs, and belly. Do a couple more in your own. Get familiar with breathing, with your breath, the deepness of the breath you want to get really familiar with. Let your whole body breathe, not just in the chest, not just in the belly. The whole body breathes. And then bring one hand to your back of your head, one hand to the front of your head. This will calm down your nervous system. Take a couple of breaths here. And then bring the arms out to your side, down to your side. And then we'll inhale again. We're gonna draw up this earth energy, gather the energy above us, and then slide it. Give yourself a massage this time of the scalp. Bring the hands, massage the back of your neck. Bring the hands in front of the neck, massage the front of the neck, and then bring your hands down the front of the body, the soothes, the heart. If you're feeling anxious, just do this. This will calm you right down. Just soothing the upper body, the heart, over the belly to the back of the legs, soothe down the backs of the legs and come up the front of the legs and then a big circle around the belly and just hold. So we just smooth out that energy and notice how you feel again. We're gonna open the flow. Um, this is more of, a, it's kind of like a meditation in motion. We'll do, the opening of the flow is just bringing your arms up, your arms are very heavy, and then you exhale, you release the arms down. Inhale, come forward on the feet, and as you exhale, shift to the heels. Inhale, lift the arms up, come on to the ball mounts of the feet, and exhale, shift to the heels. So you inhale up, and you exhale down. Inhaling up. If you feel like you're going too quick, you want to slow it down. So we're slowing down the movement. When you slow the movement down, it helps to slow the nervous system down. It helps to slow the heart rate down. And we're just simply lifting and releasing. This time we're going to take a little bit wider. This time we're going to bring the arms up. You're going to rotate the left arm in a big circle behind you. Bring it in front of you. The palm is faced up and then both arm palms come down. We lift the arms up to rotate the right arm all the way behind you, palm is faced up, and then both palms are down. <clears throat> Lifting the arms up, rotate the left arm all the way around, palm is faced up, exhale, both palms are faced down. And continue, inhaling up, rotate all the way around, palm is faced up, both palms come down. Inhaling up, rotate the arm, the left arm, palm is faced up. Exhale, both palms are faced down. Inhaling, rotate around, palm is faced up, both palms are down. Inhaling up, rotate the arm, palm is faced up, both palms are faced down. And then do a couple at your own pace. Feel that flow-like feeling. We'll do one more. One more arm. And then release down and experience how you feel. We'll bring both hands to our belly. We're going to rock from side to side like a bamboo in the wind, letting the energy, the chi, go where it needs to go. If you still feel some nodding in your hose, in your body, visualize that area and visualize chi, energy, going to the area. Remember, our thoughts are an energy. What we think affects how we feel. So imagine, visualize, visualization is very important. Visualize your body just being fluid and open. And then come back to a stillness. We're gonna bring both finger hands down to your side, arms down to your side. <clears throat> this is called mountain posture. 
And you want to root down through your legs like roots of a tree. You're grounded and you're strong here in that one. We want the lower body strong. We want the upper body fluid. So as we root down through the legs like roots of a tree into the crust of the earth, we are now connecting to our earth energy. We can go below the earth into the middle of the earth, which is the molten lava, the biomagnetic field, and this is our Frankenstein plug-in. We are plugging into our energy, external energy source, the earth. And then lift the corners of your mouth up in an inner smile. Creating that inner smile creates a positive reaction. It'll start to drop in dopamine, the good hormones. And you smile till you, you make it, you fake it till you make it. If you're not feeling happy, that's fine. You don't have to. But by just lifting the corners of the mouth up, it actually neurologically triggers the brain to feel well. And that's what you want those hormones. You want those good hormones in your body as often. So smile as often as you can to drop in. It's a healing posture. It's considered a posture of inner smile. And the affirmation in this posture is, I stand like a mountain and I move like a river. I stand like a mountain and I move like a river. And then we're gonna bring the, the cross our arms over our chest. The affirmation here is, I am protected and I am safe. I am protected and I am safe. Bring the palms of the hands right to your heart. And the affirmation here is, and I am free. And I am free. And experience your body, your mind. And now we'll slowly move into a stillness, into what's called Shavasana, deep relaxation. So find your spot for deep relaxation. You can do this lying down on the couch, you can do this lying down on the floor, you can also do it sitting whatever feels best for you, whatever you have available. The most important thing is that you are comfortable. And as much as we need to move and it's important to move and to circulate our bodies, it's important of what we think to circulate our energy, it's as important to be still. Because in the stillness, so much can be heard. And in the stillness is where we rest, and in the stillness is where we heal. If you don't rest, you don't heal. It has to be the yin and the yang. Too much of something's no good, too much of another thing no, is no good. Finding that balance, recognizing when we need rest, recognizing when we need movement, that's self-care. So as you come into this comfortability of Shavasana, which is a deep relaxation, it's a posture of doing nothing. But in the nothingness is where all the work happens. So take a couple of deep breaths here of what you know what deep, deep breath is <clears throat> as you connect with the breath, the in and the out breath. Also connect with your, the back of your body. If you're lying down, the back of your body touching the earth. If you're sitting, feeling your legs touching the floor, your feet touching the floor, and your glutes sitting on the chair. And let the floor support your body. Let the chair support your body as well. Knowing that it will support you. The earth will support you. We are part of the earth. We are part of nature and the earth will support you. So you can let go of any tightness or gripping that you feel in your body. Let it go. In the letting go, you create so much space in your physical and mental body. You can create space for health, for healing. You create space for softening all those rough edges all that grip. Just let it go. Knowing you can let go without losing control. Remember, the earth is here for your support. 
Letting go into that peaceful feeling, that surrender, where you can heal on many levels, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Dropping into that feeling of deep rest. The more you practice this, the easier it becomes to go into that deep rest. The more you move, the more you feel, the more you feel, the more you move. Let your whole body breathe from the toes to the crown of your head. Breathe into the back of your body and the side of your body and the front of your body. Let your whole body breathe like a newborn baby. Newborn babies breathe fully and deeply. There's no stress in their body yet. And that's what we want to get back to, that childlike feeling of curiosity and wonder. Openness, softness. And as you rest here, connect with your breathing in and out. Let everything sink, the front of the body sink into the back of the body, the back of your body sink into the floor, into the earth. Just let your heart float. Let your heart float. Rest the heart. Rest your body. Notice how Shavasana feels, and if it felt wonderful, refer to it often. Knowing this is the place where you'll do the most rebuilding, repairing of what you've damaged over the years. And then begin to move a little bit. We're going to slowly begin to transition from this non-moving to moving. But do it slowly, do it gently. Sometimes it's nice to bring your knees into your chest if your low back hurts from lying down. Do whatever you need to do until you finally come back to a comfortable sitting posture, still with the eyes closed. Return back to sitting, eyes closed. Stay inward, stay with this feeling. You can come back to sitting on the chair, on the floor. As you still keep the eyes closed, I'll read something for you. Imagine you have just woken up in a mud and grass hut on the edge of a field 2,000 years ago in northern China. You do not hear a motor or television set. Only the sounds of wind and birds and water running in a shallow ditch. You then step outside into the spring sunshine as you feel the warmth of the sun soothing your muscles and your joints. As you walk to your fields of millet, crisp early morning air carries scents of fertile soil and new growth. Before bending to your daily work, you stand facing the rising sun for a few moments. Then you move your arms out to the side and slowly overhead as you gather the sun's warmth into your hands. As you exhale, your hands slowly come down the front of your body until they point toward the earth. You feel relaxed, yet full of sun's energy. You repeat this movement numerous times, then stand very still and peaceful as the sun rises further into the sky. You feel a deep bond to the earth and the sun, the moon, and the water. You cultivate a contentment out of thin air. You just did Jigong.
before, again, you move out of this practice, still keeping the eyes closed, again, notice how you feel, how you feel emotionally, how you feel physically. Maybe get a word that describes this feeling. And then you're going to rub your hands together, create some warmth of the hands, bringing your hands to your eyelids, keeping the eyes closed as you soothe your eyes and your brain. Slowly open your eyes into your hands as you slowly transition into the light, moving the hands further, opening the eyes further. As you come back into this moment and letting this practice bring for you whatever you need today. Let it carry over whatever you need today. And namaste. And before we go into question and answer, write down your experience 